that now the legal framework is there. We just need to work together. We need to bring you all on board and make sure we support these things that are going on. And, and um, it's Becky here. Some of the things that we are doing with uh, Rebecca, I think all of need to come on board. Uh, no, we have Gaba, we have all the others in the health and beauty industry. One of the things the commission has done is to set up a sector school body. It's still in the process. We will make sure before the end of next year, the sector school body would have been set up. They will come together to decide on the standards, what kind of skill areas. Even within your sector, there are specific skill areas that we have to train people on for them to master it and be specialists so that we can also tell the world that if you need this kind of service, Ghana has it. We are the center of the world and we can make it. You know, I'm, a, I'm an academia so I can talk and I wouldn't want to talk too much. So thank you very much for inviting me and we are always here to support you. Thank you so much, sir. Now, if there's any question, there's anyone who wants to pose a question, um, and the gentleman from the Barbers Association, please go right ahead. Once again, uh, yeah, okay. it's about the Barbers as well. I want to ask about our curricula. I, I don't know, I don't think there's something like a, a curricula for us. I try. I built some, but I don't know how to get it certified. So I just want to know one or two about it. Thank you. There is one already developed for the barbering uh, sector. And there's one project Ghana government is supporting to pay for that's the Ghana TVET voucher project that people have been able to benefit from. You know they have the Ghana Barbers Association and they are already they have people that are already trained in the national proficiency one and proficiency two. We want to move it to certificate level to the extent that people can go as much as doctorates if they do wish. But yes, there is we have started that uh, uh, curriculum is available. You can contact your trade association or you can contact the commission if you do want to register your academy to train more. But I can tell you that when I went to Fumasi, for those that have gone for even the proficiency one and two, want all the, they want the other colleagues to attend because their performance and their outcomes or outputs are way better compared to those in the traditional sector. School training is hands-on, no doubt about it, but it has to be based on some standards. All right, any questions as well? Any other question? If not, thank you very much, sir, for giving us this very thorough conversation on TVES and certification in the beauty industry. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. We absolutely appreciate it. Again, a very big thank you to Haja Bibata Shannon Muhammad Zakaria, CEO of Microfinance and Small Loan Center Maslow. I, I, I will be coming over, you know. I also have dreams. <laughs> and as well to the Executive Director of TVET, um, Dr. Fred Che Asamoa as well, for being a part of the Beauty Business Forum. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we shall soon be having a conversation a panel discussion with some very incredible individuals, a lot of them titans in the makeup, hair and beauty industry. Um, someone who honestly makes me want to get married just because I can get my makeup done. Valerie Lawson, founder, CEO of CVL Beauty, will be, will be joining us in that particular conversation. Olive Kofra, uh, founder, CEO of Beauty Technicians. Um, a friend of mine and someone really good at branding, digitalization, and everything else inclusive, Stephen Nana Boydi, Head of Marketing Glamps Makeup. Marie Noel Yakubu, Founder and CEO of Marie Noel Spa and Saloon. Martha Ankoma, Brand Ambassador and Actress. And Victoria Lebanay, Actress and Founder of Skin Pop Shop, who will be joining us for a conversation of effective customer engagement 
using digital platforms. And that conversation will be led by one of the pioneers of what we know as the makeup industry here in Ghana. She is someone that has thoroughly paid her dues in the makeup industry. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexandrina Sandra Don Arthur will be the moderator for that very exciting conversation. But before we get into that panel discussion, I shall call on someone who has made his name and mark in the digital space and media. Someone who knows his stuff when it comes to uh, blogging and branding and conversations about everything else inclusive when it comes to the digital space. Uh, he's going to be talking on the impact of new media in the beauty space. Ladies and gentlemen, a welcome round of applause for the CEO and founder of Kobe Che News Live. Ladies and gentlemen, Kobe Che. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Make a loud and make a lila as Kobe takes over to tell us about the impact of new media in the beauty space. Kobe? Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm super happy to be here today and uh, I'm here to talk about social media and the impact on beauty. Now, before I start, social media is the new community. And so whether you like it or not, we are all part of that community. So Instagram is a community, Facebook is a community, Twitter is a community. All these platforms are community. Once you have that fundamental thinking, then you know that all the things that you do there, the world is watching. So you need to keep that in mind. Anything that you are doing on social media, in regards to the content that you put there, the world is watching. For instance, I have over 400,000 followers on Instagram. I created that account. I created that community. So just like me going to live at that someone, and I started creating community. Now people come in, they give birth. So all these members following all of you on social media, you are the leader, you are the chief, you are the president, and you are, you are in charge of all this community. So everything that you do goes a long way to affect these people. That is why personally I'm very careful about the content I put on my platform because it go a long way to affect people and impact people positively and negatively. Now, the topic is the, the new media and its impact. When we say impact, what is the meaning? For example, a car has an accident. I mean, a friend will call you. What was the impact? It means that car, I don't know, a crash in impacts many yeah. A circle, and a circle. Another meaning for impact is influence. A mark that you leave at a certain place. Your influence. That is why within, right? Within GTP, sorry. GTP will sign matter because of her influence. And a lot of people will get GTP just because of that influence. I have seen a lot of barbers, makeup artists, I mean the beauty industry, all of them are on this digital platforms. Now, what is the impact now? What are you creating? What is the impact? When people go on your timeline as a beauty show, what is the impact? Your brand identity. No, let me even break this down. The beauty industry has the command when it comes to branding. In the nutshell. Because branding is your identity. So if I close my eyes, and I should just think about anyone here, or any brand here, how the person looks, how the person represents. I mean, it could be your logo and all that, but for me, anytime I give explanation in regards to brand, I don't even add logos and all those things. What I add is your reputation. That is the brand. The conversation people have about you and your when you are not around, that is the brand. That is the influence. That is your reputation. So what we mention like she, Brida, something, something, Salon, Kobiche, Salon, Kobiche, Brain, when people mention it, when you are not there, some of the things, the conversation they have around 
you. That is your brand. For instance, social media has become very easy for you to connect with your consumers or your clients. Those days when, I mean, you know um, uh, social media, you have to walk and just go and sit down. So I remember those days, Oboko, uh, Salud, no more pictures. You go through, before you know that, oh, maybe I like this star, I like this particular star. But because of the impact of social media, now when I go on your platform, it gives me an idea of who you are. If I jump off the stage and you go on Instagram to check my pro, uh, uh, the, the things that I do, or when I go on your timeline as a beautician, it gives me an idea of who you are. I don't need to even have to connect with you. Your platform or your social media gives me an idea that this person is professional, this person is this, this person is this. So let's be mindful how we manage ourselves on social media. Again, there should be a clear difference between you managing yourself on social media and your brand on social media. I have quite a few female friends who have uh, makeup uh, pages. And I, 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 when I meet them, I request for those handles. And when I go, I tell them that you can't mix pleasure with your work. Because for instance, I mean, she visits when we're eating, joking with friends, and it's on the business page. No. Try as much as possible to create some personal page that you can have your fan and all that. Because when I request for your handle, your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook, it gives me an idea of who you are, how you manage it. So that is very important. Now, which of the social media platform are you using? Instagram is good with visuals and pictures. Anytime I ask them, most of them have taken advantage of Instagram. They are not, most of them are not on Twitter, they are not on Facebook. Probably I'm, I'm, I'm yet to know why most of uh, the beauty industry don't like Twitter. Most of them don't like them. You understand? But there are a lot of clients or customers, they want to work with you, nobody else but you, because of the things they see on your platform. There are some food. When you go and buy, it's not like, you know, I, I've seen a lot of uh, pictures of Jollof on social media. When you go and buy the food, they have the idea, okay, they But because of the brand and reputation, how they package the thing, you go and buy the Jollof. One of the things you can also do to engage your followers and your clients online, Again, a lot of people just post their pictures and they just leave it like that. One of the key things that you must also learn to manage yourself on digital platform is your interaction. That is also key. What a lot of people when they post their pictures and the videos, they just leave it like that. People are asking questions, who made them? So make it a conscious effort on your digital platforms that anytime people ask you questions. You are ready to respond to them. So that is engagement. So make sure that anytime people are sending your DMs, open your DMs. I don't know why you people, it's a business place. Then they'll make it private. I don't know what they are hiding. So make it open, let people interact with you. Again, let's learn how to create content. And try, when you're creating your video content, you are given tips. Always start with how to, because how to is common, I mean, in your department or in your sector. How to do this, how to do this, how to shave the beard, how to do this. So if consciously, every week, you are given tips on how to do this, how to do this, it also gives people the idea that when we come on your page, there are a lot of things we can learn. So don't think about the money you get from the people but again, think about the impact you give it to your clients and your consumers. So how to do this, how to do this. So always in the beauty cycle, your name will be on top because they will tell your friends that when you go to this person's page, there is something that you learn every day. And that is what I do on my page. I make sure that before the week ends, apart from my news, I put content that people will learn something. 
So what are you giving back to your community? What are you giving back to the people who are following you? It is key. Again, one of the things that I find very heartbreaking in the beauty industry when it comes to the online space is that you guys sometimes hardly post. So get a calendar, get a content plan. Let's say Mondays, you are giving tips to introduce the week. It's a, it's a Monday. Make sure you do this, make sure you do this. In the middle of the week, which point are you posting video? So that when we come on your page, things will be in order. And when you post one video, please wait for some time before you add another video or picture. Let people consume the content you've posted. But we have posted about some few minutes or some possible. Don't push the content on your followers. No. Don't put content or pressure on people online. So make sure that you have a content plan. So Monday you are posting a picture, Wednesday you are posting a video. On the weekend, starting Friday, people are going for weddings and their, uh, their parties and their funerals. Do you have any tips for them? It's a weekend, you are going for a wedding. This is the beauty tip I have for you. So always there is something refreshing on your page. So make sure that you create content. Again, Let's learn how to use hashtags. For instance, Kobiche Salo. So anytime that you are posting a picture or a video, you add a hashtag of your brand. So that will be easy for people to identify you. Once people click Kobiche Salo, because that is the hashtag I've created with regards to all my content that I post. So once people click on Kobiche Salo, all the activities I've done for a period of time, all of them will pop up. So let's also learn how to what? use the hash tags. Again, when I started, as a social media is a community, you don't know who is watching you. A lot of people don't connect with some social media pages because the handlers are too harsh. I've asked you, where is your location? How much do you charge when you do makeup for wedding, bridal makeup? How much do you charge? And it looks as though you don't need the money, but you want to flex the client. And I've had that complaint, like, that is what a lot of you guys do. I had the opportunity to travel, and when you go outside the world, social media interaction, I said, when we sign up, the fact that there are a lot of pages, but if enter into their DMs any day, hi, how may I help you? My name is. But also, over a chrome, uh, over a chrome, uh, over a chrome, uh, hi, how may I help you? My name is. Hi, please, how much do you charge? Make up. Hey, what's up? <laughs> like, make sure that you, you have a healthy conversation when people enter your DMs. One of the, la the last thing I'll say is that numbers are good, but don't let the fact that, I mean, there are people who, who tell me, Kobe, I want an account to buy. I need 10, one by 10K, 11K, 20K followers to buy. And that is what most of you guys are doing. They buy followers and uh, handles. Now, this is the danger. You don't know what the person was previously doing with the account to amass that numbers. So if you are a beautician and you go to buy that number or that numbers, when you start posting your beauty content, you notice that the engagement is low. Because in Corfona, I'm be in the I'll come out and I'm not post to beauty near man. So when they see, they will skip. If I should sell my page to someone and the person should start doing beauty stuff or health, the person might not get the engagement. So be careful the people that you buy. Uh, Instagram pages and all that. Try and start from the scratch. In Kakra, in Kakra, in Kakra. And a lot of you guys, you get so discouraged when you don't get the numbers, when you don't get the uh, views. When I started blogging, it was difficult because of my path. 
If you don't post this, you won't get numbers. If you don't post this, you won't do this. But guess what? Consistency is key. And if you want to be around for a very long time in the beauty industry, don't rush. Grow with the people. Let them know that this is how you started and this is where you're going. So don't be discouraged when you see that your friends are getting the views, you post videos and they're getting the numbers and all that. Please. Numbers are good, but make sure that you start from the scratch. Thank you so much. Very fantastic submission by Kovichi. Now, uh, we're going to a question panel, or oh, question and answer, sorry. So if there's any questions for Kobe to answer on the issue of impact of new media on the beauty industry, kindly raise your hand, I'll be more than happy to take your question. Uh, any question for Kobe Che on his very wonderful submission? Any question at all? So we're good. And on that note, thank you so much, Kobe, for your very excellent submission. A uh, round of applause for him, ladies and gentlemen. Truly a great submission on all the things to do and not to do as we try and engage our followers on social media as beauty brands. Now, on the issue of engaging customers or consumers as well, uh, I'm going to go into the next panel. So we're going to have an actual panel discussion. So I will call on um, stage has to change up and bring the chairs needed for the next conversation. So we're moving on into the panel. And if we can get the chairs put on the stage for the next panel conversation. And there it comes. And I will call on first and foremost to introduce the panel members and as well to get into what will be a very exciting conversation. Allow me to call on the moderator for this section of or the fair or the show. Um, ladies and gentlemen, she is a phenomenal makeup artist that has created a brand and uh, an identity as one to look out for in the beauty industry. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to call on Alexandrina Sandra Don Arthur to take over the next section of the show. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the AMB Fair 2021. We're celebrating five years of doing this and we know there are gonna be many, many more decades of celebrations of the AMB Fair as it grows in leaps and bounds. Today is the first day and I'm very honored to be the moderator for this very important panel discussion. We are going to be talking about effective customer engagement using digital platforms. I believe each and every one of you here and in the stalls have a method of communicating with your customers digitally, whether it is a WhatsApp broadcast, a website interaction, YouTube comments, and obviously Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Um, so today we're here to talk about how to engage our customers effectively to ensure that we get the best of what this industry has to first panelist ladies and gentlemen <laughs> thank you so much for being here we have seats that are filled to the brim so i think we can start at this point um from my right hand side i'll start by introducing miss victoria levine she is the ceo of skin pop shop as a makeup artist mrs marie noel yakubu my big sister, CEO and founder of Marie Noel Spa and Salon. We have Olive Koffer, CEO and founder of Beauty Technician Salon. We have Martha Ankoma, an actress and a brand ambassador. And we also have Mr. Stephen Wendy, who is a digital marketer and a communication consultant. So as I said earlier, our topic today is effective customer engagement using digital platforms in 2021. My first, let me introduce myself, Alexandrina, before I get on with this. I am your humble moderator today. 
And the first question is going to go to you, Mr. Boudi. Mr. Boudi, um, can you help us understand what, what is the understanding behind digital customer engagement? Thank you very much. You can call me Stephen or call me Nancy. All right, I'm part of this family. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, engagement or digital engagement is everything we do, the interactions we have with our customers or prospects online. Digital meaning we're using digital tools, so online or with our phones. So everything we do from telling them about our products and our services to nurturing them to buy our products and services, even the delivery of the products, even after they've used our products, managing the post event. The reason why, and I want to stress on the post part, but the reason why the post is important is that these days, everybody's a publisher. Kobe just talked a lot about people having platforms. Once the person has a phone and data, they can post anything about your brand or your product. And so if you don't engage them and you don't take care of the experience that they have with your product, they could post any bad stuff and that impacts your brand reputation. Plus, as they use your product, they have questions they want to answer. The engagement includes what traditionally we could like to call customer service in Ghana. But that's not all about customers, all customer service is about. Answering their questions, dealing with their requests and all of that. So generally we're going to look at how we leverage technology or digital to do these things. Uh, Stephen, when, when would you say this engagement actually starts? What's the point where we start engaging with customers? I think for me, as a marketing communications person, it starts from the minute you tell, you want to create the awareness that I've got this product, okay? And if I can use digital platform, I would do that. A lot of us are familiar with creating posts. So this is uh, a foundation, this is a, uh, what you call, um, uh, a mascara, or this is whatever. We're telling them about our products. Now, Kobe said a bit, the way we do it is important because you are engaging them to encourage them or to tease them to come and buy your product. So you have to tell stories about your products. And this is where I find that most of us, we often do the before and after pictures of when we put a makeup on people. But a lot happens between the before and the after. And that's where you can tell a story. So how has the transformation been done? So all the way from say, why did you pick even this particular product? I've done a bit in the makeup industry, for example, and you will find that people's, the shade you put on people's faces speaks a lot. So you can't just transfer one makeup and use it on another person. Or even in different climate, you can't use the same makeup basket and shop for it. That's not here in Ghana yet. But we can all the way from that. It's part of the engagement because we want the engagement to be exciting, to be an experience, so they would want to come back for more. Thank you very much, Stephen. My next question is for you, Martha. <laughs> the question I have for you is um, to do with pre-COVID and post-COVID. So developing from pre and during COVID periods, how would you say digital customer engagement looks like now? We're looking at like before COVID hits, before we had the lockdown, I guess the trends were different then. But now I believe a lot of people are taking their digital platforms quite seriously. How, how can you explain that to us? How, how has it changed before COVID and now? So I am a brand ambassador for GTP and also a film actress. Picture 11 inches, yeah, she's my sister in the industry. And I would say before COVID, we were really doing well. You know, people were not wearing face masks and all that. So when you post something out there, people are ready to get it. With my job as an actress, people will be ready and willing to go watch a movie in the cinemas. But since COVID came, and I don't know whether the minister talked about it, certain restrictions have been put out. So you can actually go to the cinema, feel free, and watch a movie. It's been restricted. You can't even eat popcorn. You can't drink... Um, Coca-Cola or even water when you go to watch a movie, yes. So it's really affected our business. But aside that, I sell fabrics for GTP. I'm their brand ambassador. So automatically, you are like their PR, public relation officer. I mean, even though you are not, but people look up to you. You influence people with the brand you represent. And so when I post GTP fabric out there, I tell people to come and buy. And with what he said, 
It's authentic. Our fabric is original, it's genuine, it's authentic. But what will make you believe is authentic? There's a face to it, which is Martha and Oma. But I need to showcase the fabric for you to believe in the fabric. So, I'm wearing GTV. Tell me I'm not looking nice. It's really nice. You would love to get one, right? Good. I have to come back and tell you how you can get the fabric so that you can go and buy, don't go and buy a fake GTP fabric. Excuse my language, I don't know how to say it, but I have to say it. We have a lot of Chinese people, I mean, making fabrics, and which is not the original, genuine, authentic GTP fabric. And I'm sure people like the makeup brands, those who have produced beauty products and all that, they face the same issues, I'm sure. You put your product out there and you find people doing the fake ones, it really affects your brand. So you think you are selling something, by the time you realize someone is also selling the same product, which is not your product. And so I go out there, once I post, I make sure I'm talking to the customers. So someone will come and ask, Martha, where will I get this GTP? Where will I get the fabric? I will tell you, go to all the wooden shop outlets, you see GTP. If it's not wooden shop outlets, go to Mokola or any of the GTP shops you find. Then someone will come and ask again. That's where you have to be responsive and receptive. You have to be very open to um, the people you communicate with on social media. You have to let them know that you are a nice person and you are open to views. Trust me, you are not there by yourself. They are following you because you are selling to them. They are buying something from you and they know that they can actually relate with you also. So effective communication comes in. And so I give directions, I talk to them. I even go to the extent of telling them about the fake ones in town, the colors we print and all that, and makes business go, goes on. You get it, yeah. Martha, would you say that, um, when I think of, of the business you're describing now, personally speaking, putting my, my shoes into that situation, I would say that, okay, maybe before COVID, I would like to go to a store and touch and feel everything, interact, you know, it's all part of the buying experience. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, post-COVID, you're like, mm, I have to use a digital platform to maybe buy something. Mm -hmm. And I have to look at reviews from people that maybe are wearing the same thing, such as yourself, since mm -hmm. you would also be wearing an outfit. Do you have customers like that, even more so now, that maybe are a bit anxious to go to, let's say, a brick and mortar shop? And the shop is Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok or wherever it is. And they ask you a million questions because that's what I would do. I say, what's the texture? What's the color? Yeah. What's the true color? Yeah. Can you put it against the skin tone? The true my skin tone is it for someone a bit more darker? You know, these kind. Do you have these type of interactions? And how do you get through them? Or do you find them a bit uh, nerve wracking? You know, you have to be a nice person. Trust me, someone is paying you to be a brand ambassador. It's not like um, you work in an office and you go to sit behind a computer two four seven. You just have to be nice to people and sell a product. After all, you're making money. Everybody makes money. I sell my product to you. You pay me my money. I go happy. Do you get it? And so, and let, let's get this straight. Kobiche was saying something. You never know who you are talking to. It could be a manager somewhere who might want you for something else. So it's nice to be nice on social media. Not just on social media, but even in person. So, yeah. but aside that, we have a GTP, uh, by GTP shop, okay. it's on Instagram, and so if you have all the questions, sometimes I have to give Joshua's number to them, then they can communicate to Joshua, he works with GTP, he knows the fabrics better, then they respond to the customers. So, so in effect, what you're saying is that a brand, in order to also improve and, and capitalize on effective digital communication on the platform, the shop, like let's say the brand here in question is GTP, they must have an easy customer experience for people to shop because they are selling an item. So to not make it complicated, you have a shop, as you just said, yes, and so people shops. go on there, they are able to see the fabric they like, yeah. and then maybe it's down to reviews and mm -hmm. a feeling of what yeah. they feel they want. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, the brand GTP is very well established for for decades um, and more. So people know the what they're getting, yeah. they know the fabrics and stuff. So that's that's really good, Martha. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. My next question is to Mrs. Mary Noel. <laughs> um, with the ever evolving trends in communication, so 
So with the ever-evolving trends in communication and its technologies and all the different functions it plays, at what point did your company, uh, Marina Well Beauty Spa, integrate digital engagement into your customer's experience? And let me add this, because I am one of her first clients from when she started, when I was a mere young girl, wanting to get my nails done and my pedicure, and I would be that irritating client. And I know back then, there was no Snapchat, there was no Instagram, there was no digital engagement. So I wanted us to go back there where there was none of that, not even Facebook, I think. And business was still going. So how, how have you adapted to that? marketing started really about 10 years ago but back then what I always tell myself is customers are always right whether we like it or not and um, if a customer comes to you you should be willing to attend to them and listen to what they have to tell you so I mean back then I'll talk to my clients oh can you let me know if you were happy I mean uh, feedbacks, I'm very positive towards criticisms and I'll tell them, you know, just let me know how you feel, the experience. Because back then it was more of word of mouth. You know, people, you tell, I mean, when they e experience a, a pampering feel, they will definitely come back because they, they are happy. So that was how we were communicating, you know, without marketing digitally. So, it's more of a one-on-one, -on -one. make sure you attend to the clients. Before you start work, you ask them what shape you want, how do you want it. You interact with them positively. And I keep telling my staff, before you, back then, before you even start working on a client, some of them are intimidated by faces, by positions, so they will actually um, be timid to interact with some of their clients. And I tell them the first point of interaction is introducing yourself and asking them if they want a cup of tea. Then, you know, you break the ice, then you start uh, listening to what they want and you need to pay attention because what the client wants is what you have to do. So once they leave happy, they come back. So we didn't really have any form of, you know, digital communication but it was more of word of mouth and calling them on the phone, making sure that they come back for their next appointment. And do, you, do you run a booking system sort of like, let's say on Instagram or on a website where someone can just book or schedule an appointment? Currently, yes. Okay. We, we've started doing in, um, Instagram interactions, Twitter, Facebook. We're on all the social handles. Yes. So, so, so in effect, you do have clients that would um, not would start the communication digitally. Oh yes. Before they even come into the of them. Yeah. Right. So they will tell you what they want. Yes. They might send pictures yes. of the state of Absolutely. their nails, so that maybe I'm sure the next question will be like, how much will it cost? And then you have to give them an approximate budget just without even meeting them. And how have your your staff been able to adapt to that? Um, well, it's coming with the times. They themselves are on IG, some of them are on Facebook, some of them are on um, Twitter. So they know, they are used to, you know, the digital interaction. So the front desk is who, who takes appointments. Yes, as we said, some people send pictures and they want to make sure that they, they actually prepare you before they come for the experience so that it, they don't, you don't waste their time and your time as well. So the staff is taking it quite well. They get it. They are good with the times. Yeah, I think you've done a great job moving with the times and still stay established and still at the top of your game. Consistency is not easy, but it is key. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my next question is to Miss, Mrs. Victoria Lebene. Um, so, moving on, on the same topic that we just discussed with uh, Mrs. Noah Yakubu, um, can you walk us through how your company, Skin Pop Shop, um, has adapted to digitally engaging customers? Maybe for, for Skin Pop, Pop, it will be pre COVID and post COVID. How have you changed your communications? Okay, uh, once again, good afternoon. 
Williams. Um, the Skin Pop Shop actually emerged three years ago, and it started off with the homemade recipes, putting together ingredients, natural ingredients, uh, that are amazing for the skin and for all skin types, without bleaching the skin or ruining your skin tone. And so what we do is that uh, we run consultations before we even sell the product to you. Because we do this because we know how customers can be sometimes. And if you just go off that, oh, I want a cream. We need to know how your skin is. Let, let me break you there. Yeah. Am I guessing right if I say Skin Pop Shop is started primarily as an Instagram online store? Yes, it did. Okay. It did. That's where it all started from. And I think that came immediately before COVID. Once we started operating, a few months, and then COVID came out, and we're like, okay, it, it, it looked like serious business. Now we needed to go all out to speak to the clients online, make sure that we're running consultation, getting enough details of the clients, what they actually want, and also recommending the appropriate products to them. And so it's been pretty much uh, uh, lucrative. It's, it's been ideal that uh, we used more of the digital platforms instead of you know coming physical because then it was coming so there was no way people could even come all the way out to see us and so we just had to use the digital platform take it through and now we're here bigger and better <laughs> fantastic Victoria I have to say I love the name of your brand it's very catchy skin Thank pop you. you know and I Thank think you. that does exactly what it's meant to be yeah. doing. And I love the fact that, um, as we pointed out, your business started on Instagram. Yeah. And so you already had to put in a lot of effort a into lot of engaging with it's your been, customers. It's been so many efforts back to back. Right. You know, um, calls, text messages, Instagram. Yes. Sometimes you don't even know uh, which video of this person is. I said, I'm the one chatting you on Instagram. Okay then can we halt the conversation here and go on to uh, WhatsApp so that we can have a direct one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Instagram can sometimes be a little bit jamming because people are texting directly on there. Right, yeah. right. Um, speaking as a customer and seeing certain complaints that people comment, and I think each of one of us has seen that at some point, um, I realize that sometimes when buying products, people get frustrated with um, the lack of information within caption. Do you guys, like, you, you see this fantastic thing. You see, let's say, a cream from Skin Pop. You want it, you see it's done amazing. And then in the caption, which is obviously a store, so they are trying to sell products, you lack you don't price see points. anything related. You don't see anything related to the price. So now it's an extra effort. Because I believe that, um, my observation has been that the customer has become more and more lazy and more and more frustrated. They want a very quick and very smooth service. Mm -hmm. So the more information that they can see at a glance, the happier they okay. are. I'm and happy you're smooth. raising this point. Yes. Um, let me touch it a little bit. The, the issue with prices and information is when you're posting a picture or a product on Instagram. Um, we per se are not about the price. Okay. It's not the money for us because we can just post a picture, put little information and say, okay, 500 answers. But it's honestly not about the, the money. Eh? It's about the product, the details, the ingredients, yes. what it does, what it may do to you, what it will not do to you, your interest in it before we even introduce a product because someone may want uh, a facial cream or a facial set, you could see that someone is really going through bad acne, okay? And she's in dying need, she wants to sort it out, so she's desperate. Okay, so she sees this post, and it doesn't have a price, but it has the details, ingredients, how it's done, what it will do to you and all that. But they are not interested, they are interested in the price. So what we do is we don't even post the price, you know why? We want you to come for consultations. You don't necessarily have to come to us. Just call us or text and we'll reply you. So when we take you through 
and we see that that particular product is what you need, then we can go ahead and introduce a price to you, even if we have to give you a discount, or you, or someone can say, uh, my budget is not up to that, I have so so and so. Okay, we can meet you halfway, because our interest is making sure that you have a remedy before anything else. Fantastic, thank you so much thank for that too. information, thank you. Um, Mr. Bailey, Stephen, <laughs> the next one is, Stephen, with your expertise, um, what digital engagement platforms and softwares are that cannot do without, the things that you definitely have to have as a business? And why and how much would, um, would it cost, let's say, a young startup, makeup artist, entrepreneur, a hairstylist, or organization to implement it? What are the type of costs we're talking about when we want to actually engage in this? All right, thank you very much. So for our industry, I recommend Instagram, YouTube, because I mean, you can have YouTube as your personal TV station, your channel as your personal TV station. And we underutilize YouTube. I mean, we've all, in our industry, we've all seen even unboxing or doing quick eyelash or quick nail or whatever. Those are videos you can do. I would add TikTok to that. Because TikTok is growing in our industry. It's not big in Ghana, but in our industry, there's a lot of penetration. So I will add that. You can't ignore Facebook because it's like a one-stop shop. It's got the numbers, it's got the mass that you need. So you would add Facebook. Okay, if it's Snapchat, I will add Snapchat. Now, because we're talking about engagement, I would add WhatsApp. Victoria just said something. Sometimes somebody conversation, you need to move it to one to one conversation so you need to move it there or sometimes you will find that if you have whatsapp business it gives you some functionalities that you need you can even use your whole catalog on your status so these are things you need to do. so that's about the apps and the platforms that you need to be on i would if you can afford it have at least a one page website because that becomes your personal real estate. That's what people will go and deep dive about you. So for those of you who have a range of products or services, for example, you will find that it's not always that people will go directly onto your wall on Instagram or wherever. But if they're on your web homepage, on your website, on your homepage, they can go around, see everything organized the way you want it. So if you can afford it, or at least there's something called Google My Business. If you can, you have a Gmail, you can have Google My Business. That would have the the direction to your shop, to your location and all of your opening hours and all of that. And it helps you when people are searching for you, they can find you. Because for a lot of people when they're looking for these things, Google is where they start from. For these are the platforms I recommend. We talk about price, about money. Do you say LinkedIn is one is a platform to be mindful of? Um LinkedIn is good, but it's more professional. The reason why I didn't mention initially is that it's more niche. When you move, I'll give you an example. At some point, for one of the brands I was working with, we had what we call Club the Look. So we're going from bank to bank, 8 o'clock in the morning, they will go and give the bankers, the ladies, free makeup and talk to them about their skin before they start work. I don't want to mention the name of the brand, okay? So there you see, it's more of a professional environment you're working. So you want to be on LinkedIn where they are. The caveat, let me say, is that LinkedIn is not a place to start selling. It's where you build your reputation, build yourself as a thought leader, become an expert. So you become the go-to person. Not that I want to patronize Martha, but I know her not only as an actor, but somebody who understands fashion. So if I'm doing a project in fashion, she has that reputation. She's a thought leader when it comes to fashion and keeping it natural. You know what I'm saying? So you can have that kind of presence and that's where LinkedIn become relevant. So I won't recommend it first to those of us who are here, but if you can do it, or even it comes to a point where elsewhere in some markets, some beauticians have contracts with corporate bodies that they do, they supply to the whole business and all of that. These are areas so where you're looking at corporate contracts and things like that. Those ones, the people who make the decisions are on LinkedIn, and that's where you reach them. Does that make sense? Okay. Absolutely. If I can answer the second part, if you want me to, the bit about the cost. Um, I often say this. 
social media or digital is pay to play. What it means is that it's not free. Let's get that straight. So when you post that, don't expect people to come and see. Unless you have someone like, again, Martha, who has already grown a fan base. But even there, sometimes you'll find that you need to boost it to get an extra. You understand what I'm saying? So you need a bit of budget. But again, it's a budget that you can pay or it's how much you can afford. Because how much you put in determines how much you can get out when it comes to reach or engagement or whatever. Facebook, for example, has a plan they call a dollar a day plan. So a dollar a day will get you somewhere or whatever. What I will say is that one, create the platforms and create them right. Kobe said, if you can't do it, get family or friends or interns to help you create these platforms. And you yourself start learning, invest in what I call content creation. That's very, very important. I see all of us can do all these stuff on Instagram, on Snapchat and the rest. Let's invest in creating content like that, that people come and engage with. Because it's not always that you can go and hire a big photography, a big studio to shoot for you. So learn those things because it's the content that will tell the stories about your brand. Victoria said something I want to pick on. So you said you don't put price first because you are offering solutions. You're not selling products. If you put price there, you reduce the conversation to just the price. But once they engage, you start making that. So you create content that tells stories about the services. But I love that. Okay, so it's act, It's not always about money. Where you are big enough, you're engaging an agency. Some agencies that I have, that I work with, will charge you minimum $2,000 a month, for example. Everybody here can pay that. But that's when you know what you're getting out of that. So start small, but remember, like I said, it's pay to play. So it's not free. Have a budget. I would say for those of us here who have our own shop or whatever, if you can afford $100 a month, which is about 600 CDs, to put on boosting your poses and it'll get you somewhere. Okay, that's a starting point. So, so if I'm correct, um, the very basis of the first cost will be data costs. Because yes. as soon as you hop on, you need to have data. Exactly. And, and constant connectivity to be able to engage, engage yeah. with customers digitally. Um, I love the, uh, there's one word, there's one phrase, uh, post and throw. So you never post and throw your phone away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> you post mm -hmm. it and you keep it on you and you engage. Yeah. Um, I believe that um, another cost here is added content, content, yeah. content creation. Because if you're doing it and editing yourself, then that is that is a negligible cost. But if it's something that you want, you know, a bit of a higher end finish, um, either on phone or on professional camera, then you're looking at costs for videographers and editors. And then I believe also your promotion. promotion and advertising costs. So I think that it's it's quite flexible. You can pick and choose how you want it. So anything That's the beauty of there, it. if you're really concerned about the actual figure that goes to this, I think that it's very flexible. It depends on what you want to do. But as Stephen said, you start small and you grow. Because some of these uh, vendors as well are willing to collaborate with you the larger your following becomes. Because you can even meet an up and coming um, videographer or editor, and then you get the best of both worlds. You grow together. Growing <laughs> together and establishing a relationship. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Stephen. That's right. My next question is for Valerie. Then welcome. Thank you. Um, my question is, how relevant has digital customer engagement proven to be to your customer's journey, both as a makeup artist and your CDL beauty customers? I don't know if they're the same person, um, but how relevant has that been on your customer's journey? And can you recount an instance of significance to your brand experience? Okay, so my journey actually starts, and I'll give you a little background. My journey started by default on Instagram. So in university or before university, I was in the States um, for the one year break. Um, in my time, long, long ago, there was a one year break um, from secondary school, between secondary school and university. So I was there, I went to a Mac store and I went with my auntie because she was looking for makeup. And you know when you go to the Mac stores, a lot of the a lot of the artists who attend to you are paid on commission. So when you go and sit there and they put all these lights on you, it's all marketing. And they're just trying to get you to buy as many products as possible. 
But I have like an artist background. I have a business and an artist background from secondary school. And I have like a flair for sketching. So when she sat down, I was watching what the artist was doing. And mind you, I had no desire to learn makeup. I'm like a nerd, you know, well I was like nerdy, just into my business books. And um, I, I was able to make sense of what they were doing as an artist. I was able to see, okay, they're shading something or they're highlighting something. But at the end of the day, my auntie went home with about 15 products. And in my mind, I was like, this was scamming my auntie. So when we went home, my auntie was like, ah. her face is, is covered, because she had like allergies and she had some spots. Her face is covered, but it's a lot of products. And for an older woman, she just cannot see where to start and where to end. So I told her that the next day, I'll try with a little bit of the knowledge I was able to pick and how it made sense in my mind. So I did that. And then they, and then she said she loved it. I used just about five products. So she had 10 products which were useless, basically. So when I was coming back to school, she gave me the 10 products. My mom gave me some old Bobby Browns and some things from her kit. And then I came to school. So I was in university business school and I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't really usually like to go out. Um, so my friends would be going out and I had makeup on me. So I'll do their makeup and I'll post on this new app that was called Instagram. At the time, Instagram was not a business app as it is today. I miss those days when Instagram was just like a lifestyle, a personal app. So that's why my name is still Miss Lawson and didn't change into the CVLB to anything. So there are two separate brands that organically kind of separated. So um, one day I was there and after school, Printex called me, sorry, your competitor, called me and said um, they were looking for a makeup artist. And I said, I was not a makeup artist. And the reason why they asked me was they saw that's, I liked what Kobe said about, um, you never know who's watching, that's the beauty about Instagram. I feel like a lot of people get into the numbers and, you know, all the other things that don't actually matter. What actually matters, and I'll give you an analogy, is just a few people who are actually watching. And there are certain things they are looking out for that we are usually not privy to. And when you're authentic, and when you are true creative, it translates to them. So they called me again and they said they had 11 models and they had 100 CDs in total to pay because I was not a makeup artist and they kind of just needed a makeup artist. And I was in business school, I was like, okay, my routine is really boring, so let me try this. So that was my first experience. Looking back, that's one of the biggest, um, that was my breakthrough into the, the beauty and makeup industry. On set, one of the models who's like my best friend now, um, her best friend at the time, I stole her from her best friend, her best friend at the time was getting married and she booked me out of that set. Okay, so this is how Instagram kind of created a ripple effect. So out of that, her name's Kafi. Kafi, one of her bridesmaids, was getting married. And then she booked me because she saw the work. Now, I was scared. I was not a makeup artist. I was an artist, and I, I could understand it in the sense of an artist. I could understand the makeup process in the sense of an artist, in terms of a canvas, color theory, um, undertones, it's the same process as an artist. Do you, do you know what I mean? So that was one of them, and I think my entire journey has had, I've had so many um, instances like that. I've had, I've worked on the Norwegian Prime Minister, and you won't believe that her team contacted me in my DMs, did he send an email? I have the email tag, um, I have the email tag, I have the call tag. They contacted me through my DMs and then I moved them to the email because you want to have that data, right? But the, I also agree with Kobe when he says he doesn't understand why people say no DMs. I also don't understand because there's so many people, my, well for me, my Instagram page was my, basically my portfolio, my online portfolio for the longest time. It's just now that we're able to break in and organically move into um, newer social media platforms. Valerie, I do agree with you, uh, speaking as a makeup artist as well. Um, when Instagram started, it was very much like Facebook. It's a photo album. You know, now it's becoming more video-based. I believe 
in the next couple of years, it's going to be completely video. I hardly see any still photographs. I mean, unless it's vloggers or fashion, oh, there's always video, there's always video. I watch more stories than I watch timelines um, and feeds. And yes, a lot of makeup artists, I think every makeup artist started on Instagram, unless you are from a different generation where it was maybe websites. But you realize that our industry is not one that we always gravitate towards starting and opening a shop. You know, because we're selling our services. You, you would rarely find, um, now you find makeup studios, but it was very rare to find that a standalone, unless it was within a salon or within another establishment, you would have a little makeup section. Um, and I'm speaking about Ghana in Africa in general. But yes, um, Instagram for makeup artists is, that is our beginning. <laughs> and it, it's still, we're still going to be using it. Um, I will say that um, from what I learned with trends now, I think TikTok is more organic, where you really, it's like how Instagram was before, the algorithms changed a couple of times, and now it's all, they're trying to push us towards boosting our posts rather than helping us really see everything we want to see and what we're interested in. So they are curating your feeds, and if you don't know that, um, I always like to tell anyone who listen that be careful of the pages you spend so much time on, on Instagram, because the next time you open your Instagram, your timeline will be populated by those pages you spend so much time. Video uh, views, it's three seconds in, right? So if you spend three seconds watching a video of, let's say, cute kittens, um, you bet you're going to find makeup art, you'll find more makeup artists and more makeup inspired on your explore page or your timeline. So you have to, Instagram has become such that you have to become very specific. Instagram will be populated with news and bloggers. So, so as makeup artists, I always like to say, you know, let's fill our feeds with inspiring posts. We need motivation from time to time because God knows we get stressed. We need mental health posts, right? We need inspiring things from nature, beauty, colors, international makeup artists, local makeup artists, those that are in Africa. You know, you need to be very, very targeted in what you're watching. And um, as Valerie rightly said, it all goes down in the DM. So I don't get it why people would say no DMs. Um, a lot of times, just like Valerie, I have dealt with clients that have contacted me on DM and then I push them to email. Um, but even then, I have still booked clients just on DM when it's a short notice or something like that. Um, Valerie, I'm gonna ask you another one here. Um, how relevant has digital customer engagement? Um, Proving to be to your customers. Oh, sorry, I'm repeating that one time. My bad. <laughs> so, Valerie, practically, can you uh, outline how the digital customer engagement plays out for makeup artists in Africa and how can we leverage it? Okay, so I think I've already given you my initial stage coming in. Um, I feel like in your, in your career or in your, on your journey, there are different stages and it's important to know which stage you're on, you're at, and when, you, when you're able to understand the stage you're at, you would know which platform to leverage. Okay, so I wouldn't advise that you open like a LinkedIn, a Pinterest, um, all of them at the same time and then just, just start putting it out there. I've been doing this for 11 years, I'm not saying wait for 11 years, but I feel like I'm now at the stage where I know exactly what I know exactly what content, what kind of content to create for each platform to feed each group. Okay, so I'll say that. Um, um, outline how digital customer engagement plays out and how makeup artists in Africa can leverage. It. Okay. So for makeup artists, I was appointed, um, I'll give you an example, I was appointed Maybelline's Artistic Director um, for, in 2020. This was during COVID, okay, and the reason why, I think, well, from conversation, the reason why I got the appointment or they approached me for the appointment was 
they came on my page and uh, the CEO at the time, I believe, Seiko, he had seen a campaign that I had put together. Okay, so this was a bridal campaign with other brands, other bridal brands, because when I'm not just in the VC industry, I'm also in the bridal industry. Okay, so we wanted to, we, we initially created a campaign to boost um, our brands as a collective. First. Okay, so that we can leverage off of each other's numbers and platforms and sell each other and sell each other simultaneously. So that was the that was one of the aims, and that was a huge success. On the on, at the time, my name was mentioned to him. He went on my Instagram. He googled me. Then I think the first couple of things that came up were my business, my brand CBLBC's website, and then my Instagram page. And he went on the Instagram page because if you go on the CBLBC website. You won't see too much information about me, you see more of my products. So he was like, um, he's been looking for somebody to take on this role. He went there, he's a man, he didn't scroll too, too, too deep. He just went on like maybe the first nine tiles and he was impressed and that's what sold him. So through that, he started to make more um, inquiries, he started to question, he started to ask people about me. At the time, I had won some awards. So all of these things started to pop up, and it gave me a lot of um, standing and leverage. Do you know what I mean? So that is one way. Now, I stood on that appointment, and I got verified. Okay, and verification is not the goal, but verification also gives you more leverage. So throughout my Instagram journey, it's just it's like a leverage game. Do you know what I mean? You need more credibility, more value, because you are trying to not just be boxed up as this makeup artist, just as a makeup artist. There are so many opportunities. Um, I was contacted by my runway group in the UK, and I was brought in to collaborate with MAC Cosmetics UK and Ireland. And there are even bigger partnerships coming up, coming up because they went on my Instagram. I'm just building my website now because I've gotten to the point where there's enough, um, I have enough stretch and body to put on a website. But Instagram was my main, or has been for 11 years, my main portfolio, my main website, my main information site. That's why I don't believe that you should um, be worried too much about the numbers. None of the people who actually change your destiny in your career journey care about the numbers. So I'll give you an example. When you watch like American Idol, you realize that there are three, ju there are three judges. And then there's a crowd of maybe 50,000 people. And those people are usually the loudest, the, the screaming, boo, 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 yay, you know. And then the three main people who actually decide who is a winner or who actually um, have like power, they're just three. Usually that is in your, in your career journey. That's what I've learned. That it's probably just three people out of, I have what, 123,000 followers. 120 or even 127, sorry, 120 will not, will not do too much. They would, they would recommend you here, they would like, they would engage. Yes, I'm talking about the Valerie Cross inside. Those 120 will not have too much say over where, how far I go. Okay, they will have say in, at a certain stage. But the three main, you know, solid key players that would change or move you out or give you more experience are usually people you don't know and you don't see. That is another reason why we'll come back to the no DMs is a, is a self play. You shouldn't self sabotage by saying no DMs. I think there's a lot of egos and there's a lot of, you know, weird perceptions around numbers um, on Instagram. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you so much. Um, we're drawing to a close, so uh, my last panelist, dear Olive, do we have the microphone? The next question is going to go to Olive, and we are going to close the discussion with this one. So Olive, tell me, in a nutshell, after everything you've heard, and obviously you can share your experiences as well, because um, I know you have a lot to share, because I, I, see, I see how you engage with your customers digitally. I mean, in a nutshell, for hairdressers and maybe even makeup artists um, in Africa, how is digital customer engagement the game changer, and here's the key, in making lifelong customers? Okay, thank you. So, 
Instagrams, um, Facebook has social, all social media platforms have made us know how we are all global. You may be in your small little corner in Anabarka or Joel or wherever, but you're truly global. And it does, that in itself is life changing. Um, and it's a game changer. Because like they said earlier, you never know who, will be, who you would be meeting or who would be looking at you or watching you. Um, I would say one before I get to that. Being very intentional about engaging is very necessary as a makeup artist, a hairdresser, or whatever business owner you are. Being very intentional about engaging is very, very necessary. So I would, I'm a very practical person. I would say, number one, if you're here and you don't have an Instagram page, you don't have a Facebook page, or any form of social media page, please do one now. Take out your phones and do one now. If you do have one, and it is not pertaining to what you currently do, it is showing off your babies, your children, your husband, and it has nothing to do with your businesses, please change that to, per to be able to um, perceive or let people perceive you as what your business stands for. That's very important. And create content that you want to attract. You want to attract help, uh, clients. If your, your Instagram is to attract clients, create content that would attract clients. If you do not know how to do that, go to somebody that you like, that motivates you, that inspires you, like Miss Valerie, like Marina, or like any one of us over here. Look at what we're doing. Copy us. Just copy. And if you, in the, in, in the efforts to copy, you can be very authentic. Be yourself. That is a, a simple call to action to being very global, to engaging and make sure your business is at the forefront of social media. Um, does that answer to your question to an, to an extent? It does, um, but what, we also want to look at how it plays into making lifelong customers. So returning okay. customers, okay. customers that are even maybe growing. So let's say you have, as a hairdresser, I'm yes. sure you have situations where you have um, mothers and daughters doing their hair. You know, it's generational. Right. I think hairdressers have that advantage over makeup right. artists where you have retention. Right. It's like guys in barbershops. Mm. Yes. You, know? yes. you think we do? True. Yes, 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 yes. That is very true. So we're there through different stages of life. Yes. That is very true. Yes. Usually we enter, for makeup artists, we enter at like pre-bridal, let's say it's a bride, pre-bridal, or a party with girls, bridal showers or something, or baby showers, and then it, it spreads pretty quickly, especially when there's word of mouth and good engagement. But here we're talking about lifelong Yes, so creating lifelong customers with your social media. Now let me... All of our clients, we all have clients in our businesses, love to be a part of what we do. They want to really believe they belong to what we do. And if you don't know that, engage them in a little way. For instance, in my salon, we have something called the Wall of Fame. It would amaze you the number of people, the number of backlash I have gotten from clients who haven't made it to that picture wall. And just yesterday, I was listening to a conversation from a client and she'll say, look at all the looks we've done, yet I'm not on that wall. And I found it very interesting. So even with that, if your clients come into the salon and you're doing any form of transformation or you're doing anything that um, will change their life, let them know that, you know what, I want to involve you in my social media. Listen, it would amaze you how every time they come back, they would say, this week you didn't put me on your social media. Last week, you didn't put me up. There are people who have said to me, I have a backdrop, which I think everybody should get one in their place of business. I have a backdrop in my salon where we have a ring light. We go and take a picture. There are people who have cussed me out because I've, never, because I've never put them in that backdrop before. These people keep coming back to me because I allow them to be a part of my social media journey. They show, they, I get to show what they do that they're even paying me for to other people. And people come back with their pictures. And I say to them, oh, you know what? Somebody bought your hairstyle last week. And they just love it, they love that. So people like that sense of belonging, knowing that they are a part of what it is that we're building. So I think that's been intentional.